Hello everybody and welcome to 2024. Today begins our daily devotionals and we're gonna be starting our new daily growth book in the book of Matthew. But before we do that, we also are gonna talk about fasting because every new year, we as a church start the year fasting corporately to get ready for the new year and to hear all the great things that God has done. So before we jump into Matthew, I wanna share with you five reasons why we fast. Five reasons why we fast according to scripture. Number one, fasting strengthens our prayer life. It says in Ezra 8, uh, 23, so we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us and he heard our prayer. There's something that happens when we take our prayer life to the next level through fasting. The second reason why we fast of, of the many reasons is fasting helps us receive God's guidance and his clarity. Take a look at Acts 13 too. It says, one day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. Reason number three, fasting humbles us before God. Check out this verse in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 27 through 29. It says, when Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and fasted. He lay in a sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before, before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day. So we know that God seen Ahab's fasting as a form of humility before the Lord. And the Bible makes it very clear when we humble ourselves before God, he will exalt us in honor. So let's fast to humble ourselves before God. Reason number four, this is a great one. Fasting is one way to intercede on behalf of others. It says in Isaiah 58, six through seven, it says, no, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. In this portion of scripture, God was identifying a type of fasting that doesn't honor God. And then there is a fasting that does honor the Lord. It's a type of fasting that has others in mind, that keeps others' needs in the forefront of your mind. And when we operate that way, really we're operating in the compassion and in the heart of God for others. Fasting really truly brings us closer to the heart of God and the way he feels about people in need. Reason number five, fasting helps you to overcome temptation. Look at Matthew four, verses two through four. It says, after fasting for 40 days, this is Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus says this, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we know this, the fasting prepares you to overcome any temptation that may come your way. So these are five reasons why we fast, and this is why I believe that we are gonna fast this year to prepare for a great 2024. Now, let's jump into Matthew verses one through 17, chapter one, verses one through 17. I'm not gonna read the whole portion of scripture, but I'm gonna summarize it. There are a lot of imperfect people in the line of Christ. There were godly men who really had uh, some sin in their life. There were adulterers. There were um, uh, people who did wrong. And we know this, there was, there was even um, women that were highlighted in scripture. Some Tamar sold herself as a prostitute. Rahab was also a Gentile prostitute. Ruth was a Moabite, a Gentile woman. And Bathsheba was an adulteress, who's the one who sh she's famous for falling into sin with King David who's also in the lineage. So we can see that in Jesus' lineage, in his ancestry, there were imperfect people. Now, what's the point here? Jesus humbled himself and he, he placed himself in our shoes. And we know this, that God used imperfect people to bring about God's will in his life, in their lives. And we can see that Jesus came to offer grace and compassion to sinners. Jesus wasn't born into a perfect uh, lineage. Jesus parents weren't perfect or his great, great, great grandparents weren't perfect. But it also shows us this, that God does not reject 
He does not reject us because of the mistakes we've made or because of sins we've committed. But as a matter of fact, Jesus is calling the sinner to a great work. He's calling them to turn from their old ways and to turn to God. And when we turn to Him, we know this, that He will use us, He will forgive us, He will cleanse us to do a great work. Last scripture I'll share with you, Romans 3, says, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Thank God that Jesus came and humbled himself and made himself sin on our behalf so that we can be declared righteous in his sight. Well, today's day number one. I pray that you're blessed. Let's start this year off strong, and I believe God is going to do some new things in and through your life this year. God bless you.